Hi, this is Clark Sullivan, broadcasting live from the UC Regents meeting here at the UCSF Mission Bay campus in Mission Bay, San Francisco. It's 8.30, uh, we're running late, none of the Regents have arrived yet, so uh, also I'm sorry for getting here late. Uh, anyway, stick around, and maybe the Regents will say something of import. But pretty much the agenda's been set, and it looks like they're going to raise graduate fees by 13%, I believe. And uh, there's not a lot of students here today, which is unfortunate, uh, this being summer break. And I'd have to admit that if I was a student, I wouldn't be here either. <laughs> but students should come because this is very important to their future, especially if they're considering graduate work at the University of California. Just to give you a little uh, back, or a little, uh, I would say, all right, well, a comparison. Um, I graduated from Johns Hopkins University with a Master of Science degree in 1977 in pharmacology. And at the time, I was going to school, it cost me $3,750. Today, to get the same degree at University of California, which is not even on the same tier as Johns Hopkins as a medical institution, cost over $50,000 a year. And that's just intuition. That doesn't count for books, lab fees, housing expenses, food costs. So you practically have to be part of the 1% just so that you can afford to go to college nowadays, or, or unless that you want to spend the rest of your life in debt slavery, owing money for the rest of your life. And chances are you're going to be paying on that $50,000 loan that you took when you went to college. It'll end up costing you $150,000. That's by the time you pay all the interest and everything. So a lot of these regions, they live in a world of wealth. Generally, they get their jobs. They're appointed by the governor, and they're already wealthy to begin with. So I don't really think that they understand what it's like to be a student uh, in the first place. So that's why I'm here, and I'm mad as hell, because have got all these regions here. They're making six-figure salaries, probably. So. We'll talk about that later. Anyway, you're here with Clark Sullivan at Occupy San Francisco channels here at Ustream.tv. Uh, let me know if, uh, how the transmission is going because I'm only getting one or two bars on my 4G network. But uh, it seems to be doing pretty well. Kind of boring in here. Yeah, I couldn't bring a bottle of water in here. Right. It's no, fucking ridiculous. You never know what you're going to do with water. Right. Oh, yeah, they're afraid you're going to throw it at somebody. That's what it is, right? But cookies and it would be tempting. Right, but I got a, I got a bag full of cell phone batteries in there. Each way are pretty hefty, right? So, you know, it's like, give me a break. But it's just typical because UC police, UCPD are not trained, right? in the use of force, right? I mean, these guys are, I mean, real cops, you know. I laugh. I laugh. I remember when they attacked us back at the 1986, when we were doing a, the anti-apartheid divestment. We kicked their ass, right? right? Yeah, they had to call in, uh, they had to call in the Oakland riot squad to, to beat us up, you know, because they couldn't, they couldn't, couldn't beat us. I was lighting dumpsters on fire. And, yeah, and they, push them at the police. The yeah, yeah, yeah. They're good at beating people when you're alone, right? Like no, when you don't have but somebody with you. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, I don't like them, you know. And then what they do is they say that they have an eight-block radius around the campus, right? And they act without any, like they don't even like cooperate with the San Francisco Police Department, right? Uh -huh. I'm not a big fan of the SFPD, but you know, at least they're trained, mm -hmm. you know, properly. But anyway, just getting onto this campus pisses me off. I can't help it, right? <laughs> Looks like a bunch of refrigerator boxes that were turned upside down, right? Yeah. Ugly, ugly campus. And they didn't really ask for a lot of input when the, from the community when they built this thing, right? It's like UC's like, they think that they're like a government entity onto their own, that they're not answerable to anybody, right? All in the name of higher education, you know, if you can afford it.
Okay. So we don't have more recent information, right? Okay. Uh, we're going to interview some students here. Yeah. Peter's doing a good job of that. I'm going to go out and interview a couple of the students that are here in just a little bit, maybe before the meeting starts. <sighs> Thank you for being here and viewing our live stream at Occupy SF. If you have any comments or anything, please log on to the social stream, and you can use your Facebook or Twitter identity in order to log in. I'd be happy to hear from you, and let me know the quality of the telecast and all that. It's the only reason I own a cell phone, <laughs> is because I love live streaming, right? And I really feel that politically, that it really, it gets our message out that would never get out, and plus, there's no mediation, so they can't say that we're editing it or anything like that. It's all live, right? Mm -hmm. And even if the police sees your camera, it's all on the internet. It's instantly on the internet, and they have to get a separate subpoena. Thank you for Uh, well, yeah, I work with Occupy a little bit, yeah. I've been an anarchist for 40 years. Activist, struggled in many struggles, won most of them. From anti-apartheid to AIDS to you name it. But then I got real excited by Occupy because like 20 years went by and most of the young people weren't really involved in any kind of protest or anything. And then when, I, when Occupy was happening, it really excited me. I, I became involved, but we've lost the... The uh, occupies lost the lost their way somewhat because of uh, you know getting driven out by the police and the massive police repression that's gone along with that. I mean they were you know I know people that have been arrested six and seven times and they're actually uh, you know like the city's pressing charges on people and you know it's just ridiculous. But that doesn't mean I'm going to uh, give up by any stretch of the imagination. Oh yeah, well, we and it does on different stuff. It's pretty exciting. Well, I'm gonna. That's how I came here was because of an Occupy. Uh, I'm gonna list serve for the Occupy group, and uh, one of my friends, Peter's here. He's out interviewing people. He does great video. Oh yeah. Uh, he's fantastic. Right, Peter's over there. You know, and check him out on the web. Oh, here we go. Hey. Well, the regions are starting to show up, it looks like. Yeah, I asked this one cop where the bathroom was. He couldn't even tell me, right? There's like a Starbucks right across the street. He's just like, dude, how did you get your job? Right? I'm sure they didn't give you a test. <laughs> Fortunately, now I don't have to work at a regular job anymore because of my disability, so this allows me to increase my activism <laughs> even more. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm working on, um, right now, for the people out there that are viewing, I'm working on putting together a live streamers conference. Um, this is going to be held probably as soon as in the fall, and it's something that's somewhat in the planning stages right now, but it's going to be a national event, and uh, we're inviting live streamers from all over the United States and all over the world from all the different platforms, Bamboozer, uh, there's Livestream, Ustream, and there was another streaming service. But anyway, we're going to invite you out and uh, you can either participate online or come to the conference and we're going to be talking about a lot of issues that are central to live streaming today, which is the most exciting medium that is offered media-wise. Now well, there's Newsom. I see Gavin Newsom's here. And we were glad. Yeah, we were glad to get him out of San Francisco. He's a liar. He's like all of them. They're all liars. He says he's unhappy in San, San in uh, Sacramento. <laughs> well, I would be too if I had to live in Sacramento. Nothing against the people there, but it just gets awfully hot. Remember, that's live. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's okay. They know. I already know. Oh yeah, everybody knows. It's not that bad, but 
the weather there is just, I'm used to San Francisco. It's a, more people showing up. Oh, we got a pretty good little crowd here, folks. Got some more zombies. Glad everybody's here. Again, we're at the UC Regents meeting here at the University of California, Mission Bay campus, and this by China Basin here in San Francisco. Glad you're viewing. Uh, the meeting should be starting in a few minutes. Uh, if you would, uh, log on to the social stream and let me know how the broadcast appears because I don't have a producer right at the moment, and I'd like to see what the what the broadcast looks like, because I can't check it for myself. Yes. Hey, Peter, how you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, because I think that it's just like a bunch of flights. Yeah. I've got a couple of interviews. Oh, that's good. I know I was watching. It's good. It's good. I had a heck of a time getting here. Oh, it's just like it's like five blocks from the from Muni, right? Oh, yeah. You know, I'm still in a wheelchair. I'm just about out of it, but, you know. I was like... Almost didn't come, and then I said, oh, I better make it. A couple of shots I can get down here. That, were you here last time? Uh, no, no, I didn't make it. Okay, well, the same cop is, was here last time. It was extremely violent. Oh, which cop? What about to me? Uh, well, he's got to be out the door. Oh, okay, he's out the door. Okay. Yeah, well, they have a reputation for that. Uh, Hi. Hi. This guy is particularly aggro. Um, he's, he's like authoritarianism is my shtick. Oh, okay. Tired. Good morning to everyone. All right, now we're starting. First of all, I would like to welcome our alumni regents Mendelssohn and Rubenstein, and our student regent um, Stein as new voting members of the board. And I'd also like to welcome our new alumni region, designate Ken Feinhold, who joins us at the table this morning, and Van Schultz, who was unable to be here today. Welcome also to our new staff advisor, Kathy Martin. And finally, I want to extend a warm welcome to our new provost, Amy Dorr. Now today, I'd like to begin by thanking everyone for their lobbying efforts in Sacramento over the last several months, including our extraordinarily successful May visit to the Capitol. As you all know, our voices were heard. For the first time in years, state support for the University of California shows signs of rebounding. We owe our success to a lot of people in this room. It has most definitely been a team effort. I am grateful to the many students, alumni, chancellors, faculty, staff, and my fellow regents who joined together in May to carry our message to the governor's staff and to our legislative representatives. We stood together and we lobbied side by side. And we all spoke with one voice. Our success today demonstrates what we can do when we work together. This was the very first time the regents and the students lobbied together, and it will not be the last. We will continue our joint efforts. In fact, we will be turning to Sacramento next May to continue our dialogue with the governor and the legislature. I also want to thank Steve Juarez and the entire UC governmental relations staff in Sacramento who coordinated all of our meetings at the Capitol. I also commend President Udall and his budget negotiating team, Nathan Brostrom, Patrick Lenz, and Dan Dooley and their staffs. They never wavered in their determination to convince our Sacramento leaders to reinvest in California's public education system. I believe that they secured the best possible deal for UC, given the current economy. While we didn't get everything that we wanted in the budget, 
it is definitely a step in the right direction. First of all, UC's base budget was not cut this year. In addition, we are getting $90 million in state contributions to our retirement plan. This is the first the state has made in more than 20 years. Most importantly, for many of our students, CAL grants are protected for public university and college students. And the state's commitment to fund an additional $125 million in 2013-14 makes it possible for this board to keep tuition at its current levels for the coming academic year. The challenges are not over by any means. The success of this budget agreement with the governor and the legislature depends on the outcome of the November tax initiative. If voters fail to approve the temporary income and sales tax increase, the $125 million tuition buyout will be off the table. In addition, UC will face a $250 million trigger, trigger cut. That would be a total funding cut of $375 million. The potential results of that are draconian, and they are simply unthinkable. Obviously, there's a lot riding on this ballot initiative, not just for UC, but for K-12 schools and many of the social services for California's most vulnerable citizens. We have truly proven what we can accomplish by working together. Now we have to continue those team efforts. I want to thank the students for mobilizing to get out the vote. But the students can't do it alone. We all need to step up and inform California what the stakes are in this coming election. Once again, I want to thank all of you for your efforts that led to today. I hope we can continue to work in hand, I hope we can continue to work together hand in hand to preserve UC's funding. And now I'll turn things over to President Hero. President Hero. Chair Lansing, thank you. Oh. As the Chair stated, Governor Brown's 12-13 budget package, in tandem with his revenue initiative, contains an implicit deal for the University of California. It is an imperfect deal, and it is not without risk, substantial risk for the University of California. And you can see those risks in that slide. Still, it is a better deal than we anticipated, and is our best shot at taking an important step toward the financial steadfastness and stability that this university so desperately needs. I'd like to take a moment as a result to thank Governor Brown, Speaker Pro Tem Steinberg, Speaker Perez, and their colleagues in the legislature for the tremendous efforts on piecing this deal together. I'd also like to thank the thousands of UC students, faculty, alumni, staff, and community members who advocated on behalf of UC as the budget process took place. In the last calendar year, UC e-advocates, of which we have hundreds of thousands, sent 72,000 emails to Governor Brown and our state legislators in support of this university. Your enduring advocacy has been absolutely instrumental in securing the opportunity to start achieving strong, a strong financial footing for this university. To my fellow regents, let me say this. Today, we face the highest test of stewardship. This is a defining moment for the Board of Regents. If the governor's revenue initiative does not pass in November, the university will descend into an alarmingly dire state of affairs. First, you see, would immediately suffer a $250 million trigger budget cut. Second, the 12-13 tuition increase buyout funding would disappear, creating another $125 million deficit. Facing the immediate shortfall of $375 million, we would need to ask the regents to consider a tuition increase in the spring and January. As your goes down, we will take $2,400 increase mid-year to balance this budget. And I want to be very clear. Throughout this crisis, we have relied on other measures beyond tuition to fill our budget gaps. But in long of the steep long-term disinvestment we faced over the last four years, 
over a billion dollars, over a billion dollars, over one third will be down if the ballot measure does not pass. What's it seems mean? to me that we have to put much more on the table than tuition increases. That means layoffs, that means program closures, that means hiring freezes, that means unfilled positions, that means all sorts of things that we do not want to do. Given this context, I am asking you as the Board of Regents of this great university to endorse this revenue initiative.